I've scoured okay. I've scoured the internet for hours and hours and hours on end to come up with this. This is the ultimate used PC build guide, buyer's guide for anybody shopping in Singapore from May to June 2020. <sighs> this one was a hard one to make. Now, before I start this video, if you have any questions, ask away in the comments because I reply to every single comment. Now, before I start giving you all these recommendations and stuff, I'd like to explain a few things. So all the prices I'm listing are in Singapore dollars and are based off listings on Carousel because that's honestly the best place to look for when it comes to used PC hardware. The prices there generally are better and they're the most listings, most of the used PC hardware listings are available on Carousel rather than the other competing platforms like Gumtree. It's so inconvenient, I'd rather just use Carousel and keep it to just one platform when it comes to my buyer guide and recommendations. So while I recommend you get these parts used, I do not recommend you get your whole PC out of used parts. Things like your SSD, hard drive and RAM honestly should be bought brand new because these things have quite a short lifespan and are quite a bit of a risk to buy secondhand because you have no idea where they've been to. If you buy a hard drive and it was in a server, chances are it'll die in a couple of months. So to play it safe, I recommend you buy those parts brand new. But if you buy from a reputable brand, the CPU, GPU, motherboard, case, power supply honestly can be bought secondhand without much concern, so long as the product didn't come in a terrible condition. So what was my criteria for deciding this buyer's guide? So it came down to three things. The first thing was price. Very simply, I took the cheapest four to five listings of everything that I was considering on Carousel and averaged out to find like an average market value. And then I used that price to compare it with performance that it delivered based on benchmarks found online. These benchmarks were mainly Puget Systems for video editing benchmarks, uh, Linus Tech Tips and Anantep for gaming benchmarks and occasionally some other websites I will follow those benchmarks as well. After I found the price to performance and decided whether it was worth it enough to recommend, I then moved on and looked at availability. If something was plenty in the market, there was plenty of supply, then I would recommend it. However, I did not recommend anything that was very limited in its supply on Carousel. And I define this by having more than 10 to 12 listings of that product. Because if this video does well, and I think it might, and a lot of people follow my buyer's guide and suddenly start buying the stuff I recommend, prices will go up if there's very limited amounts available, which defeats the purpose of this buyer guide anyway. So everything I recommend should be reasonably easy to obtain off of Carousel at the prices I recommend. And if you are a good negotiator, you might be able to get it at an even lower price, assuming that the buyer, the seller is willing to let go. So we've got the criteria out of the way, right? Singaporean dollars all on Carousel. Let's give you the ultimate used PC buyer's guide. Let's get into it. So I wanted to do this part in front of the camera, but there were so many things to write down that I needed my script in front of me. So I shall be doing this as a voiceover. So let's start off with the CPUs I recommend. At the low end of things, I honestly don't recommend you go too low because there are a lot of things that don't really have great value for money at the low end of stuff. But the lowest I'll go is the i5-4460. And the reason I recommend this is because it's at the very least a quad core processor and it's got really good single threaded performance well, for 2015, it's a Haswell processor, yes, and it's going to be a bit hot, a bit inefficient, but it's still only a quad core. And because it is so popular, you often can find it for a good price at about $80 to $90. If you pair it with a cheap H81 motherboard and cheap DDR3 RAM, you have a good budget setup that gives you enough performance to play old AAA titles like GTA V, the older Far Cry, the older Assassin's Creed, and of course you'll be able to play games like CSGO, Dota, and League of Legends with really nice high frame rates and stuff. Now step up in performance and step up in price for this will be the i7-4770 and the i7-4770K. If you can get the 4770K at about $150 and the 4770 at about $150, then you'll be in for a treat because uh, yes, the K is a better processor, but both are awesome options at about $150 here. But you'll be in for a treat because these are all 4-core, 8 thread processors with really decent single-core performance. They're not going to be great in tri modern AAA titles, but you're going to have a fine experience with them 
and if you're playing the older AAA titles, games like GTA V, you're going to have an amazing experience with them because this was the high end back in 2015. The 4770 is honestly a really good CPU, and if you don't have no plans of overclocking, a cheap H81 motherboard for $70 with the 4770K or the 4770 is going to give you a really good gaming performance that can also do some light editing and light streaming. Now, don't expect too much, even though it's an i7 processor because it's only a 4-core 8 thread system, but it's really still going to give you an awesome experience, especially for $150 for a CPU and $70 for the motherboard. I think the i7 is a sleeper hit. However, you have to be careful because this video might be out for a while before you watch it, and by the time you watch it, there might not be many 4770s or 4770Ks left because these weren't very popular CPUs. So chances are you're not going to be able to find many on the market. And I genuinely don't recommend you get a 4770K or a 4770 for more than $170 or $180 sing because past that price point, it really starts to lose out on its value and things like that. So the next thing that I recommend, which is a step up in terms of price, but not necessarily a step up in terms of performance, everywhere will be the Ryzen 5 1600. So if you just look at the CPU alone, it's actually cheaper than the i7 at about $130 to $140. And if you're lucky, you can get it for like 120. The Ryzen 5 1600 is a six core 12 thread processor from, you know, first gen Ryzen. It is really impressive and it is a step up in performance compared to the i7 when it comes to multi-core performance such as streaming and editing. And if you're doing those things or like rendering and 3D modeling, things that need a lot of threads, if you're doing those things, the Ryzen 5 1600 is going to be an excellent upgrade over the i7 in terms of performance. It is a cheaper CPU on its own than the i7, but I consider it a more expensive CPU than the i7s because you'll be paying more for a motherboard. I recommend you get a B450 for that little bit of upgrade path in the future. And also because with Ryzen, you're going to need to buy DDR4 RAM, which is inevitably going to be pricier than buying DDR3 RAM for those old i7s. So yes, it's a step up in price, and but it's not necessarily a step up in performance because in games, it loses out to the i7 still. But if you were to keep it around for maybe another three years or two years, I think this Ryzen 5 it might also be a good investment because as games become more multi-threaded and more multi-thread optimized uh, with the new consoles coming on the Xbox One Series X and PS5, with those games being with those with games being optimized for those multi-core Zen-based consoles, chances are the Ryzen 5 1600 is going to see a big boost in performance in games as those newer games comes out. But if you're just talking about gaming performance today, I would rather go for the i7 because it's slightly cheaper and has more FPS in it. But both of these are great options, you know, the i7 and the Ryzen 5. However, if you are a pure gamer and you are unable to get your hands on the i7 4770 or 4770K for a good price of 150 to 180, then it's time for you to buy brand new because there is something called the Ryzen 3 third gen. The Ryzen 3 3100 and Ryzen 3 3300X are awesome CPUs, okay? They're only $150 and $180 respectively, brand new, and this is not inclusive of like a B550 motherboard, which is really all you need with these Ryzen 3s. But you get a 4-core hyper-threaded processor based on the Zen 2 architecture, which means you get a lot of single-core performance, which is excellent for gaming. So if you're just a flat-out gamer and you couldn't get your hands on the cheap i7 budget setup that I'm you know, recommending so much because it's such a steal. The Ryzen 3 is an excellent option as well, even though it's brand new. It, because CPU competition has been so good, the prices of CPUs have been really, really value for money and really, really cheap right now. So the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X get my recommendation as kind of a sidestep to the i7 for people who are pure gamers. If you're doing things that are still multi-threaded workloads, however, I would still recommend you go with the Ryzen 5 1600 or Ryzen 1600 AF if you can find it for a good price of about $140 to $150. So what's a step up from this brand new Ryzen 3 3300X then? Well, honestly, there's not much here. The only other thing that I can recommend when it comes to secondhand used PC parts is the Ryzen 7 1700 and the Ryzen 7 2700. These CPUs were really popular when they were, you know, around and considered quite high end, like three, four years ago. But which means, you know, they have come down a lot in price since their release, but they're still really excellent because they're still eight core 16 thread processors for 
about 200 to 220 dollars is a good price for the 1700 and 240 dollars will be a good price for the 2700 uh, at least right now so the ryzen 7 1700 at 200 to 220 is a good deal for anyone who is once again doing productivity production and things like that but if you're a flat out gamer i'll honestly save the money and go and get the ryzen 3 and then buy a better gpu because when it comes to gaming performance, the 1700 and 2700 really, really lose out to the Ryzen trees. But if you are doing anything else, the Ryzen 7s will come out on top and it might be a good idea to spend the extra 20, 30, 40 dollars to get the 8 core processors. Past this, I really don't have many CPU recommendations because you have the Ryzen 5 3600 available on the market for like 260, 270, 280 dollars brand new to use. And you probably can't find the 3600 second hand because there's, there are very few people selling such a new CPU on the market. But if you can get it for like 250, second hand is a good idea. But past that, you know, I think it's a good idea to buy brand new CPUs because the new AMD stuff has been doing awesome. They're awesome not just for gaming performance in terms of single core and single thread performance, and they're also awesome in terms of multi core performance when it comes to value for money and stuff. The Ryzen 5 3600 just is insane value and even beats out the new 10th gen intel i5 10600k which which is a mouthful of a name and also not that good of a cpu so the ryzen 5 3600 makes it so difficult to recommend any used cpus above about 220 dollars with the ryzen 7 1700 so if you are trying to look for a cpu above that price range just get a ryzen 5 3600 or like get a brand new ryzen 7 3700x or something like that there's no point buying used when you, if you go too high end so now we've done with like our cpu recommendations let's talk about some gpu recommendations for you so i don't recommend you buy any gpu under 60 dollars because the value becomes insanely stupid you've got like gtx 670s and r9 280s going for like 50 40 dollars the lowest i'll go with like a gtx 960 it's comes in at about 50 to 60 dollars if you're lucky because there's still a lot of idiots selling it for 70 to 80 dollars uh, but if you can get it for 50 bucks it is a good stop gap kind of solution to just dump in your system to play csgo for now until you can afford something more expensive but i genuinely do not recommend you go too cheap and too old with your gpu because you lose out a lot in terms of features efficiency and of course fps so the thing about this ultra low end is that you pay like $30, you get a lot of value. So if you had $30 more, dollars, you can get a GTX 970 over a GTX 960, which you can get for about $80 to $100, depending on your luck and depending on your patience. If you wait for a bit, chances are you can find it at a good price for about 100 bucks for a GTX 970, which I think is excellent in terms of performance. For 100 bucks as well, or a little bit more than that, you can get a GTX 1060 3 gig, which is another one of my recommendations. The RX 480 4 gig is also another one of my recommendations. And both of these GPUs come in at about 100 to 110 dollars brand second hand. And at that price, it's a pretty good deal because it can do really good 1080p gaming even in the modern AAA titles. It's going to struggle a little bit, of course, but it's not going to be an absolute crap choice. It's going to be still pretty good. If you have another $30 on top of that to spend, I honestly would go and try to get a 1060 6 gig or an RX 40 8 gig for about 130 140 to 150 dollars at that price range the 1066 gig is pretty hard to beat and it is a really really good option it gives you a lot of performance and it really gives you you know plenty of fps especially if you're only playing on 1080p however if you have another 30 40 dollars to spend chances are you'll be able to stretch for an R a gtx 1070 which is going to give you even more performance than that a gtx 1070 is about like a 10 15 performance percent increase over the 1066 gig and if you can find it for about 190 to 200 dollars it is going to be a good deal and your chances are you probably can find a 1070 for about that price because it was a very popular gpu so chances are you probably can find a 1070 for about 190 to 200 dollars however you have to be careful of course that you know your card wasn't a mining card because if it was a mining card chances are it might fail on you so who knows but on top of that if you have another 40 50 60 dollars to spend this is why i consider the ultimate in terms of sweet spot is the gtx 1070 ti it's another 15 percent improvement over the gtx 1070 and it costs the same as a 1650 super which it completely destroys in terms of gaming performance the 1070 ti is an awesome choice for 
anybody who is building a budget value for money rig at, and needs a GPU for about $250, $260. Plenty of FPS. It is in my system right now and it is absolutely awesome. 8 gigs of VRAM means that even on 1440p, it should be able to handle most games quite well. So you have no fear here. You should be having a good time. So that really rounds it up because past the 1070 Ti, there are very few GPUs available to recommend. You know, the 1080s still haven't really come down in price. The new RTX series of GPUs really aren't available secondhand that often on the market. And because of that, I'm going to end my GPU recommendation here. So you, some of you might ask, why haven't you recommended any AMD APUs? Because, well, the answer is simple. Because AMD APUs, you know, they their secondhand price pretty much is the same as their brand new price. There's a difference of like $10, $5.00. And at that difference of price range, you might as well buy brand new when it comes to those AMD APUs. At least the ones that are worth buying, like the Ryzen 3 2200G or the Ryzen 3 3300G. Those APUs, however, aren't that value for money because if you consider the fact you, that you can get a cheaper platform i5-4460 along with like a GTX 960 for about the same price overall, motherboard RAM included, that then you really think about the value proposition of the Ryzen's and you realize that that APU is not that worth it. If, of course, you need something that's completely integrated and easy, sure, the APU is a good choice, but for anybody else, I genuinely recommend you get a CPU-GPU combo bought secondhand. So for things such as power supply, case, motherboard, uh, case and fan and stuff, uh, there's, there's really not much I can recommend here. I mean, f uh, for the motherboards, uh, by the way, I just recommend you get a B450 for the AMD setups for the future-proof upgradeness and for the Intel setup that I recommended, just get a HD1 or a B85 motherboard, whichever cheap one you can find, because those motherboards will do you just fine, unless you want to overclock. But even then, it's, it's not a good idea to overclock those old Haswell chips. Um, so yeah, for the case and power supply, there's very little to recommend here because it's very subjective depending on your setup and depending on what you bought. That's it for this PC buyer's guide video. This is take 100 or something like that. I've done an insane amount of takes. I spent an insane amount of time on this video. So if you liked it or found it helpful, please subscribe and like the video. Uh, it genuinely helps me out a lot. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.